This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Dustin Hoffman. Good day, everyone, and welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Dustin Huffman. Today is Tuesday, October the 31st, Halloween, and the last day of October. Hard to believe we've blown through another month, and we're going to be entering the holiday season here very soon. Coming up later on in the program, we're going to talk with White House Senior Advisor for Rural Engagement, Will McKinty, about the Whistle Stop tour that's going to be happening with the president and also senior members of his administration across much of the Midwest as he touts what he's been working on for rural America. Also, we'll take a look at that ag weather outlook. And first, we'll take a look at those markets. Well, we're at the end of another trading day on the last day of October, talking right now with Jacob Burks of agmarket.net. Let's start with the grains. Jacob, what did we see today? Oh, it was pretty, uh, pretty quiet, calm day, especially in the corn market. Uh, you know, you look at the the trading range was only six cents, five and a half, six cents. Uh, really quite there. We, we ended up selling a day right at unchanged, uh, right at the 480 mark. So it's it seems to want to hang around that level. Uh, you got your D24 corn was uh, was up around the, the the 513 to 515 range. So the stagnant, the boring, the the monotony of the corn market continues. Uh, beans tried uh, midday to, to to spark a rally and. You know, beans, uh, along with the soybean meal, you know, they, they have a story. They have a real fundamental story, whether it's uh, uh, looking at the demand that's domestic, the demand that's global because of Argentina's problems earlier this year, or even looking at the soybean market with uh, with, with the potential dryness concerns in, 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 in South America, Brazil area, and then even wet concerns uh, in certain parts of Brazil. So there's a story, it seems like, in, in, in the bean market that could take place. Uh, I guess if you want to look at the, the scary part of Halloween here today is the, uh, another new low in that wheat market in the KC wheat. So just having a struggle, can't keep, uh, uh, can't, can't catch a bid really. I mean, we do have a, a somewhat of, a, if you want to find something positive in Kansas City, you got a little bit of a trend line starting there that we're, that we've balanced on here today and we went and touched and bounced off of. So crossing our fingers a little bit there. So, you know, when we talk about soybeans, I mean, we've seen some pretty volatile moves in the last couple of days. I mean, it's it's not been small moves, uh, you know, either up or down, has it been? No, I mean, even today we saw a 24 cent range uh, in, in, in the November soybean contract. And so uh, a big part of that is, is you know, we're walking to delivery here today. So today was the first notice day, first notice day that the, the commercials could deliver on the long contracts. And so you're starting to see that spread, con- you know, occurred uh, that you know the bull spread started working here they eaten back into that uh, record carry uh, so we've seen uh, you know large moves and large differences between the uh, month to month you know they're paying you to store it longs held on uh, the commercial said you know as opposed to looking at uh, moving it on to an end user we'll just deliver on that contract so there was a you know a lot of a lot of spread trades going on here today but yeah you're not talking about just small moves but you're also not talking about a small value either we're still talking about 13 dollars soybeans you know, this is still beans in the teens at this point. And so, uh, you know, to see uh, as far as a percentage move, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, that type of uh, movement will, ha- will, will continue. Uh, the beans have a little bit of volatility. And, uh, you know, that's where the funds uh, will probably be, you know, starting to put more and more positions in because there's movement there. You know, right now you're, you're not seeing just a lot of uh, movement in the corn. And so it's not as attractive to these funds that want to make money. Now, of course, we also know with the weekly crop progress report, we saw that we're getting inching ever closer to being done. We've talked with some farmers who are finishing up. We've talked with some farmers who are going to have to practically shovel snow to finish up some of their spots in northern Iowa. I mean, how much of that is playing a factor in these markets right now? Well, I think that, you know, it depends on where you make a phone call to, to what what, what story you're getting. I mean, the the guys out east, uh, you know, I've got several customers out there that have really struggled to get going. Uh, They had, you know, just... They had the moisture, and then when it was time to, to, to get in there, and they could dry, they they could come and they could combine. The fields were dry enough, but they just had some uh, some higher moisture levels that, that it wasn't worth uh, getting in there and drying it all the way down. So uh, they they struggled uh, to get going here. They've got a really good crop, and so they're looking at a at a crop that's uh, very very good, uh, but they're uh, just having a hard time getting there to get. Now, when you look at uh, across the northern part of the belt and across some of these. Uh, uh, you know the, the the northern part of the the, the corn belt that uh, that just hasn't got it all wrapped up. 
you know, I think it would have a, a major influence if we were in that inverse market, but we're in a carry market. So the market's saying, hey, we won't want it right now anyway. We want it later. Uh, so I don't think that uh, I, the one thing I think it do, has done over the last week, you know, last week we had saw moisture cost most of the Corn Belt. And, and I think you, you did start to see some basis levels pop up here due to that. All right. So moving over to the livestock side of things, what did we see in those cattle and hog markets today? Well, I think the, the the first thing that comes to your attention, we can lead with hogs. It's been a long time since you started out wanting to talk about hogs, uh, but we've seen the, the fifth day in a row here that we saw a higher, a higher trade. And uh, if you get out into some of those deferred months, June or beyond, uh, you're seeing some levels getting back up into the August time frame. You're, uh, you're a little bit off the, the September highs, but you know it's some decent prices. And, that, and after what we saw going through the, uh, the beginning of October, uh, this is a very, very pleasant surprise. So I think that, uh, you know, the concerns in China with some of the, the ASF uh, fears, uh, maybe we're not going to be uh, exporting as many beans to them, but maybe we can ex export the hogs to them. So we'll keep our eye on these export sales uh, as we come into Thursday of what we see uh, on the meats and, and pay attention to the pork exports because that could uh, really contribute to some strength if that's where we're sending, if we're, if we're exporting some, some pork to China. Now, the cattle, on the other hand, a decent day, uh, the live cattle in, in December, uh, went up. We left. We 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 went into the gap that we left on that uh, after that cattle on feed report into that Monday. Did not fill it. So that'll be something that we'll be very you know interested in watching tomorrow. But we had a positive day in cattle. Feeder cattle were slightly higher. I mean, you've seen that cattle index, that feeder cattle index, just continue to fall off. Uh, but we found some stability there. We we haven't uh, we kind of plateaued a little bit here in that feeder cattle market. All right. Well, if folks want to talk about some of their market strategies. Think about what they should be doing with some of those grains that maybe they haven't marketed yet from this year that they're kind of holding on to to see what happens or maybe even those 24 strategies. What's the best way for them to get in touch with the folks at agmarket.net? Well, for, I mean, the, the, the best way is, is to always call us. I mean, you go into our website, agmarket.net, and give us a call, but we would encourage you to look at our 30-day free trial of our Intel. That's the best way to, to get familiar with us and to see what we offer and uh, kind of see our philosophies. But there are a lot of strategies. There are a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, especially into that 2024 that I think it's important uh, with the high cost that we have to take care of. All right. Well, Jacob, thanks so much for the insight, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Hey, thanks for having me, Dustin. Have fun trick-or-treating. And that was Jacob Burks of agmarket.net. Let's go ahead and take a look at those closing numbers. Those come to you courtesy of the folks at Bar Chart. December corn up a half at 478 and three quarters. March up a quarter at 493 even. November beans up four and a quarter at 1287. January up three and a quarter at 1310 and a half. Soy meal up four dollars and ten cents at 418 even. Soy oil 83 cents lower at 5083. Chicago wheat down nine at 585 and a quarter. Minneapolis down eight and a quarter at 728 and a half. Kansas wheat down 15 and three quarters at 629 and a quarter. Oats down 14 and a quarter at 408 even. December live cattle up 30 cents at 183.55. Feeders are up 2 cents at 237.70. Lean hogs 55 cents over at 71.72. Pork cutouts even at 80.20. And class 3 milk up a penny at 16.87. And that's been a check of the ag market recap. We're going to take a short break and hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. And when we come back, we talk to White House Senior Advisor to Rural Engagement, Will McKinty. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to AMPM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Dustin Huffman. Well, tomorrow, President Biden will be in Minnesota at a family farm as he begins a multi-stop tour with his administration and his advisors talking about what their administration has done for rural America and some of the benefits out of the programs that have come through during his administration. I had the chance to talk with Senior Advisor for Rural Engagement at the White House, Mr. Will McGinty, and we talked about some of the things the president will be highlighting and also some of the things that we'll expect to see here in Iowa and also talked about what's going on with ethanol. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. So we know the president is going to be coming to the Midwest. He's coming to our neighboring state, Minnesota, here, uh, coming up tomorrow uh, and, and visiting at a farm there. But he's really coming to, to talk about what the administration's been doing for agriculture here throughout the, the last couple of years of his term. Can you give us an idea of what that message is going to be coming on Wednesday? So uh, President Biden and Secretary Vilsack uh, will, will be uh, visiting a family farm in Minnesota tomorrow. 
uh, to really kick off an administration-wide uh, investing in rural America event series. And uh, this this series will uh, will, will really lift up um, uh, through the the uh, travel of cabinet members across uh, the country, senior administration officials. Uh, the the administrations uh, uh, work to invest in partner with rural communities. Uh, but also, as you mentioned, uh, the, the work to uh, create new markets and revenue streams uh, for there at the farm tomorrow. But again, we'll have cabinet uh, members deploying across the country, including uh, a, a visit by Secretary McDonough to Iowa, uh, where he'll uh, discuss uh, uh, some of the investments being made to provide uh, better care for our veterans in in, in rural communities, especially for uh, for mental health and and, and and rural health as well. So you know, we talk about a lot of the policies that have come out, whether it's for growing the marketplaces, whether it's for supporting the rural communities. What are some of those real big highlights that the president's going to focus on? Yeah, a few a few areas that he'll focus on. You know, first of all, he'll 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 discuss you know some of the critical infrastructure needs uh, that have long been. Uh, ignored in, in, in rural communities uh, that we're finally investing in through the president's uh, bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, so some of those investments like uh, high speed, expanding high speed internet access, uh, roads and bridges, uh, uh, clean uh, energy programs, electricity, uh, but also you know updating the infrastructure that's so vital to our, our agriculture uh, system, uh, whether that's, you know, some of the investments on uh, in inland waterways, you know, we know how critical uh, the Mississippi River is, especially there in, in, in Iowa to ensure that we can transport efficiently uh, our uh, uh, you know, corn, soybeans uh, and other agricultural goods, um, but also updates to our, our ports, freight rail system. And so he'll, he'll lift up all the investments to those critical infrastructure needs. Uh, he'll also speak to the work that the administration is doing uh, to invest in, in climate smart agriculture uh, practices, including a, uh, an investment through the Inflation Reduction Act that provides an additional $19.5 billion to USDA conservation programs that many farmers, especially in Iowa, have, have, have utilized, uh, but will allow for hundreds of thousands of uh, additional farmers and ranchers to utilize to to promote practices like uh, like cover cropping, um, uh, reduced tillage, uh, nutrient management on millions of acres of, of, of farmland. Um, so, you know, both uh, with an eye for uh, mitigating some of the, the, the climate impacts, uh, but but also with an eye uh, to create new revenue streams and markets for for family farmers and ranchers. You know, additionally, he'll speak to uh, the the uh, the work this administration has done uh, to uh, promote and increase competition in, in the agricultural sector. You know, when we look at at the meat and poultry industry, uh, you know, many of those uh, those sectors are uh, you know controlled by by four uh, uh, major companies, uh, which means that that uh, you know farmers and ranchers. Um, you know, have have less opportunity to uh, market their product and re receive a, a fair price uh, through the investments of uh, from the American Rescue Plan. The president has invested in uh, independent meat processing, uh, in, including in, in, in many projects uh, there in Iowa, to provide a, a, a new market for uh, livestock farmers. Uh, we're also investing in. Uh, in, in, in fertilizer, independent fertilizer production and our domestic fertilizer production to to help with, uh, with with some input prices that we're seeing as well. And so he'll speak to both uh, the you know, market, new markets and revenue streams that the administration is is, is working uh, to achieve, as well as um, as as some of the work uh, being done uh, on the input side as well. And you mentioned expanding markets and as well. And when we look at internationally, we just got knocked out of the top spot as the number one soybean exporter in the world by Brazil. We did get a good agreement with China that was just signed last week here in Des Moines. But uh, what, what can be done? Obviously, China is not the end all be all of our marketplaces. What is the what is the administration doing to broaden that market and, and get our get our top spot back? 
Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it goes without saying, you know, trade is, is so critical, uh, you know, to, to the ag and rural economy. Um, actually, as part of this investing in rural America event series ambassador, uh, uh, Ty, who's our, our uh, the, the U.S. trade representative, uh, will be visiting uh, Indiana uh, and, and visiting a, a, a farm to, to uh, uh, lift up some of the, the work that, that the uh, U.S. trade representative and their office is doing to increase um, opportunities for international trade and, and identify new uh, uh, markets uh, overseas for our agricultural goods. Uh, so that's that's definitely a critical uh, component to, uh, to 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 this piece as well. And I guess one last question I would have. I know it's going to be a question he's probably going to get asked, or his uh, cabinet members will get asked on their on their tour around the Midwest, and that's going to have to do with uh, biofuels as uh, how they are part of the American energy plan right now as we transition to their vision of uh, of an EV future. But what we have available right now, I mean, some folks are, are wondering when the E15 situation is going to be uh, sorted out as well. I mean, EPA is, uh, as of last, as of this morning, 457 days late on on a government governor, bipartisan governor petition to allow E15 year round. And, and I know a lot of farmers want answers to that question. Is that going to be something he's going to be prepared to answer? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, he, he will he will speak to um, both uh, the investments uh, that the administration is making to uh, support the uh, needed infrastructure for uh, to continue to, to market biofuels in in, in, in in new areas. You know, there's there's funding um, uh, through this administration uh, to, to that, that will go to fuel retailers to invest in um, their ability to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to offer higher blends like E15 and E85. Um, so that will expand uh, the opportunity to, for those products to be sold at, at 4,600 additional few re retailers across the country. Um, and and, and we we'll also, uh, you know, previously had uh, the administration through the American Rescue Plan uh, through the uh, pandemic assistance for uh, producers had, had provided funding to uh, the biofuel sector to ensure um, that, that they were able to uh, to continue to uh, to uh, maintain their operations uh, uh, through the uh, pandemic. Uh, but, you know, on the E15 issue, so you know, uh, President Biden, of course, visited Iowa a, a little over a year ago to um, to to talk uh, to announce some of the the funding for for the biofuels sector and to uh, announce an emergency waiver to continue to allow year-round sales for e15 um, he uh, issued that waiver uh, the, the, this past year to ensure that 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 uh, consumers still have that that choice um, at, at, at the pump um, th this past year and I know uh, uh, EPA has uh, uh, continued to uh, to work through um, the the request of the uh, uh, Midwestern governors to allow for year-round sales of, of E15, um, and, uh, and and continues to to to, to work on, on on that effort as well. But goes without saying, you know, the president has, as he you know said when he was in Iowa. Uh, a uh, little over a year ago, uh, you know, he he uh, he he believes that uh, that that biofuels, renewable fuels, um, are, are a critical component to our, our nation's uh, uh, fuel supply, and, and and critical component when it comes it comes to uh, you know capturing uh, carbon and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, um, and and and, and sees uh, you know. In, Really, an incredible uh, you know, future in in this industry, uh, especially when it comes to some of the new opportunities uh, that are uh, being made as as we as we uh, look towards investments in uh, sustainable aviation fuels as well. All right. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. Could you remind our viewers and listeners one more time who's going to be coming to Iowa and about when we can expect them to be arriving? Yeah, so uh, Secretary uh, Dennis McDonough will be uh, will be in Iowa, I believe, next week, and he'll be uh, uh, visiting a couple of different communities uh, to uh, d discuss some of the work that the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs is doing uh, to um, uh, to invest in in, in rural health care and telehealth uh, for uh, rural veterans in Iowa. 
Uh, the VA actually has uh, opened a, a rural health uh, resource center uh, based at the, the VA in, in Iowa City. And so he'll visit um, that, that, uh, that rural health resource center and, uh, and then we'll visit with, uh, with rural veterans uh, across the state as well. All right. Well, Mr. McKinney, we thank you so much for your time and appreciate the information. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. That again was White House Senior Advisor on Rural Engagement, Will McKinty. Let's go ahead and take a look at that ag weather outlook. Well, quite a mix of clouds and sun. More clouds, honestly, than I was expecting to see this morning as we had clear skies to start the day. A little bit of snow activity off to our north and east, but it looks like that cold snap may be short-lived. Let's see what the National Weather Service has in store for the next 24 hours. Well, looking at the forecast today, we saw mostly sunny skies across a good portion of the state. There were some snow showers in the northeastern part of the state as that stretched up into parts of Wisconsin and over to the Great Lakes region. We saw highs today in the low to mid-30s. Now tonight, look for mostly clear skies statewide. It's going to be cold, though. We're going to see lows anywhere from the mid-teens to the low 20s. And tomorrow, though, mostly sunny skies, going to look a little bit warmer, and we're going to see highs anywhere from the low 40s to around 50. In fact, as we take a look at the affiliate weather map, tomorrow, Cherokee sunny skies and 42, Shenandoah sunny 50, Des Moines sunny and 46, Waterloo going to hang on to a few more clouds in the rest of the state, and they're going to be 42 under partly sunny skies. Albion will be 45 under sunny skies, and Clinton looks to be sunny. For more detailed forecasts in your area, tune to your local Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network affiliate. And that's been the Ag Weather Outlook, and that brings us to the end of today's show. You can find all our content online at iowaagnet.com. You can also find us on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and on our YouTube channel. While you're there, hit the bell icon and subscribe so you're notified each time a new video project comes out. You can also check out our free market podcasts available through Google, Amazon, Apple, Spotify, and Podbean. From the IARN studios in Des Moines, I'm Dustin Huffman. For Riley Smith, Mark Magnuson, and Andy Peterson, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.